I'm here at the British Motor Museum and this is a new event called Rustival. Um, I didn't come in the I didn't come in the Esprit, sadly. Uh, various issues kind of overheating in some way. Um, but I've come anyway and uh, it'll be good to see a few people here. Obviously they've not been to the event before because it's a new one. So we'll see who's about, see what's happening. So quite an eclectic mix of things and a few kind of YouTube personalities here. Um, UK barn finds. Um, this is over the back there, Claire and Elton and their uh, Austin. So unbelievably, Elton and I went to school together. So we were, te as teenagers, we used to hang out together. Little did we know we'd both be into the same thing in, in, uh, in terms of old cars. We were into other things that were the similar back then. But uh, yeah, they're, they're doing really well. It's worth checking out UK barn finds. You probably do already. Lots of classic cars they look at, digging them out of sheds and things like that. Uh, trying to fix them up. It's a very 80s looking uh, Sirocco. Um, I think I've seen this one before at um, a couple of things at Vista. It belongs to Wrenching Wench. Quite like Sirocco's, but I'm, I think this, for me this one's a little bit overdone in terms of the body kit and the white bits. But as I said, it makes it look very 80s. And you know, this is how eclectic things are. Ferrari F12 just next door. Beautiful car. But you know, what a difference. So there's so many different cars, I'm just going to try and pick out things that I quite like. Um, I don't know an awful lot about other ones, so things that grab my attention. Speaking of which, I've no idea what that is. I suspect, well it's on the Q plate, so I suspect it's actually not a thing. But uh, let's see if I can find out what it is. After a quick chat to, uh, to the owner there, it's actually not anything. It's kind of, um, there's bits of Fiat Ducato, bits of other things. But the, but the hull of it is pretty much scratch built. I mean, this isn't supposed to be Festival of the Unexceptional or anything like that, but you know, just a kind of a real basic car like this. And this is a sort of Mark II, isn't it? The kind of bread van shape of uh, Volkswagen Polo. Kind of make an ideal first classic for someone, like something like that, something or a, or a Mark I Fiesta. So I featured the Ferrari Mondial on the channel before. Um, this is the uh, Quattro Valvoli, so the, the sort of second iteration. The Mondial 8, which the first one would have had, oh, you can't quite see it now, someone's in the way. Um, a kind of a black grill at the back there. But So you've got black bumpers and black grill, that's the Mondial 8. Uh, this is the second iteration, as I said, slightly more powerful. Um, the, uh, the first one was sort of a little bit poorly received, I thought it was a little bit underpowered, but interesting looking things, Mondials. Used to be the, the kind of poor man's, uh, poor man's Ferrari. Um, they're, they're not the cheapest anymore. I think that's probably that, that honour goes to the 456 at the moment. But I'll just capture a little bit of this Metro. Not because the Metro is a particularly interesting car, uh, just that, uh, so my mum had one of these when I was learning to drive, so uh, although the, the instructor I had had a different car, he had a Ford Escort. This is the kind of car that I did most of my kind of, I don't know, experience driving in, if you like, in between lessons. And it's also the car that I managed to pull into the driveway in second gear, going slightly too fast and ended up into the side of the house. Uh, thankfully, very little damage done to the house other than maybe the, the meter cupboard door was uh, was bashed in, but uh, the, the front bumper of the, of the car had a uh, nice ding in it. But that was back when bumpers did their jobs, right? They actually bumped Rather than now, it would have just smashed the entire front side of the car in. So picking out this this Austin 7 Ruby. Um, two reasons. One, my wife likes them. They are quite, kind of cute. I think she has sort of uh, imagines herself driving one of these out in the Yorkshire Dales like, uh, like uh, James Herriot. But uh, this one is actually owned by someone in their early 20s. And it's his daily driver. And he's only ever had uh, pre-war cars since passing his test. So I suppose it's in the ethos of the guys who kind of organised this that you'd imagine to have which are quite honestly sort of everyman classic cars or everyman modern classics. You know, things like uh, particularly British stuff like Rovers and, and Austins and Leyland sort of stuff. So 
it's quite hard actually to to find cars that are of note or oh, to, to be fair that's probably un unfair so to, it's hard to find cars that that are kind of grabbing me and grabbing my attention um you know maybe here's one I'm sort of zo zooming in on the on the jaguar sovereign uh, the jaguar xj yeah so things like that i kind of get quite get interested with that but yeah an awful lot of them are just yeah not my thing anything well anything citroen pretty much is not my thing uh, not anything citroen since since the 50s probably anyway so there's a few things like this yeah cavalier mark one which um you know i do remember from way back in the day yeah, a lot of people i think my uncle had one of these i seem to remember him fitting uh watching him try and fit a, a child seat into the back um so you know before before they had them ready you know ready prepared for, for car seats with our isofix and things like that and he was uh, basically in, lying in the boot with his legs sticking out um trying to sort of secure it down to some anchor points behind so jensen interceptor maybe that's something a bit more interesting so thumping great v8 in the under the bonnet of that looks like it's a pretty well looked after one pretty well sorted so there's no rhyme or reason to the parking arrangement um it's kind of a row of volvos over there clearly people have come in convoy um i think these are something that's uh, worth looking at the original uh, XKRs. She's got a lovely shape to them. <laughs> so, still looking for something interesting. Yeah, so I think these early Caymans have got to be something worth looking at at the moment. Um, I guess they're you know it's, it's about as cheap as they're going to be um particularly if you can get them in a color like that There's a couple of interesting cars here rover sd1 i've seen this one before lovely kind of grassy green color um next to this maserati so is it the bi turbo yeah bi turbo oh it's actually for sale there's an interesting thing how much does he want for this then Eight two fifty. That's not bad, is it? It's had recent money spent on it as well at McGrath Maserati. Kind of nice standout colour as well, isn't it? Now, am I wrong to be liking this? I quite fancy one of these. You know, it's got nice wheels as well. It's a one five six sport wagon, Alfa Romeo. Nice tan leather interior as well. I think these are the ones that have the embossing. No, they haven't got embossed head, uh, head restraints, but uh, you can just imagine that's quite a practical thing, isn't it? It is a bit unusual. Not seen one of these before. Volvo 66 GL. Must be one of the smallest Volvos ever. So, other than a few kind of Elises and Exiges, this is the only Lotus I've seen here. Um, so, this is an XL, I guess it is, or is it in a clat? Must be quite a quite a late one. It's all sort of body coloured, like it's like the XL. One advantage of any event that's held at the British Motor Museum, so you get entry to the museum as well. Um, so you get to see whatever they're exhibiting. It kind of does uh, does change around. Some interesting kind of wedge prototypes or, or concept cars. So if you are at Gaydon, it's also worth checking out the collection centre. So you've got the Jaguar Daimler Heritage Collection. A lot of early stuff right the way through to some of the more recent and, uh, prototype cars. So this is something that really shouldn't work, but it just does. It's all polished aluminium. 
just looks incredible like you know I'm, I'm guessing they couldn't <laughs> couldn't let it out into the uh, into the elements but interesting idea so that's it from Rustival uh, what did I think of it well I suppose for me um, I didn't find that many cars I found sort of, sort of particularly interesting but if you're into old cars for everyday cars if you like like everyman classics I think it's a brilliant event it's a great location because you've got the museum and everything as well um, but they've managed to bring together people who like all sorts of cars I mean you know the word eclectic is obviously overused but really what's here is so eclectic because there's so many different things so many different styles so many different eras countries of origin marks brands whatever it's all so different so there's kind of something for everyone um, you know there's a couple of Ferraris notably the F12 that belongs to JM um, and then there's other things like you know those Trabants and things like that at the other end of the spectrum so yeah all, all sorts of eras ages types but uh, you know probably not my event particularly and, and my channel sports and GT so that sort of suggests I'm interested in sports cars I'm interested in GT cars Grand Tourers so there are fewer of those about today um, I don't know, I'm not upset by that, I probably wasn't expecting any of that kind of stuff. But yeah, a good event. I'd say if they're doing it again next year, well, A, they should. And if they are doing it again, would I come again? Well, yes, I did. I think I would. I'd obviously come in with slightly different expectations. Um, and, and maybe I can, I can bring my car as well, because, you know, that will add to the mix of sports cars. So all said and done, pretty good day weather's been okay it hasn't rained um, a little bit chilly so uh, yeah maybe they could do it in I don't know May or June time rather than um, rather than mid-March uh, but uh, yeah good day so thanks very much for watching I'll see you next time cheers bye bye